welcome back to my channel. So this weekend is Coachella weekend. Well, I guess you can say it's when Coachella starts since it's a two weekend thing. So it's obviously the start of musical festival. Musical festival? Music festival season. So in my opinion, that calls for some music festival inspired makeup looks. I don't know, what do you think? So anyway, I'm gonna be bringing you today a tutorial on this look right here. I actually think this is a really wearable look minus the lip action we have going on here because it is a little bit more editorial as far as what we've done here with the lip part of this look, but definitely feel free to take the rest of this look and manipulate it in any way that you feel more comfortable and the way it suits you. But um, it's very bronzy. It looks like you've been out in the sun all day. You are so ready for summer and for spring. But anyway, if you guys want to figure out how I got this look right here, then just keep on watching. So the first thing to start off this look, and I'm not going to put on sunscreen even though it may be recommended to wear sunscreen, especially if you're going to be in some kind of music festival that's going to be outdoors. But usually the pigmentation in your foundation is enough to block out the sun's rays. But do make sure to put sunscreen everywhere else that you have skin exposed. So first off, I'm going to be taking my Benefit License to Blot from The Professional. And I'm actually just going to be going over the areas where I tend to be most oily. Next, I'm going to prime my face using my Velvet Finish Primer Serum from Meron. Meron is one of those cosmetics lines that's kind of like Cinema Secrets. It's meant for stage makeup, um, professional cosmetics. So they had this primer on there and I bought it, tried it, and I absolutely love it. You guys know I use it like in all my videos if you guys have been with my channel for a while already. So I'm just going to be smoothing that all over so we have a nice even canvas. Now for foundation. I didn't choose a foundation with an SPF in it. Again, usually the pigmentation and full coverage foundations is enough to block out any kind of sun rays so you won't get burned on your face or anything like that. But what I am going to be using is going to be a long lasting, long wearing foundation. So I am using my L'Oreal Infallible Matte Pro, what is it? Infallible Pro Matte Foundation. <sighs> Can you all tell that I just really love this foundation? So just putting a little bit on the back of my hand, I'm actually going to start on the center of my face and work my way outward. I am tanned right now. Um, I did some self tanning, so I'm a little bit darker than usual. And my face is still the same color though because I didn't tan my face. This foundation is just a little bit warmer than what my skin is, so it'll be okay. We're going to make it work. I would also suggest to, let me take off this little earring, I would also suggest to put the foundation on your ears if you self tan like I do or if for some reason um, your skin is a lot lighter on your face than it is on your neck because you wear makeup every day. Usually our ears are covered by our hair so you don't want this really nice bronzy look going on all throughout your face down to your decollete and then you're going to have like a really white ear. So. Make sure you just cover that too. That's also another really good tip to do if you're doing bridal makeup, because in photography, it's gonna be pretty obvious. So once we have a nice even layer of foundation on, I'm gonna be just correcting underneath my eye really quick using my Bobbi Brown Tinted Eye Brightener in Light Bisque. I hate that face I make whenever I'm putting on my concealer. And then I am going to be going over it with some concealer and then highlighting the center of my face using my NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer in the shade Vanilla. I'm running low on this so I'm really scooping it out. I felt like with my tan, this concealer highlights a lot better for me now. And yes, I am going pretty heavy handed in this, but I like that um, look. So you don't have to put on this much, but on whatever you feel comfortable with. And then I'm taking that same foundation brush that I was using for my foundation to buff this all in. If you're afraid of your concealer looking a little too white, take that same foundation brush that you're using like how I am right now and it still will kind of mix the foundation you had on there with the concealer that you're trying to blend in so it looks a little bit more natural and blended and even flowing. So once your concealer is all nice and blended out, we're going to do a little bit of baking. Now for me, I'm going to bake everywhere that I did put on my concealer because I, since I am oily, it's going to help prevent a lot of oil from coming through. Now if you're on the drier side, you don't have to do this step. You can just lightly powder your face if you powder it at all. But if you do have problems with your concealer creasing and since you're going to be outside or you're going to be, you know, somewhere where you could be creating a lot of or generating a lot of heat, um, it could be possible that your concealer could slip around a little bit. So just to ensure that it stays put all day nicely, 
you can just bake it. So I am using my Mary Kay translucent powder for this, by the way, and just taking it onto a powder puff I have from Bobbi Brown. And we're gonna let that sit. Make sure you don't have any crease lines before you put on this powder, because then you're gonna just be setting that crease line. So if this doesn't look crazy, then I don't know what does. But yes, this is baking. It works. Judge it all you want to, but I'm telling you, this is your quick fix to get your concealer to stop creasing on you. I actually ended up just doing both of my brows off camera because, I don't know, I just started to get too into it. So I'm just gonna be blending away this baking and then afterwards we're gonna set our brows with some brow gel just so we don't lock any of that powder onto the brows. We can actually just blend it away with the brow gel. Just blend, blend, blend away. And look, you don't look super crazy anymore. I'm using my Bobbi Brown Sheer Powder Brush because it will just lightly take off the excess powder but without really disturbing your foundation or anything like that. Now once that's all blended away, I'm gonna be going over, bleh. I'm gonna be going over my brows with my Maybelline Brow Drama Brow Gel, or Natural Brow Shaper. No, it's called Sculpting Brow Mascara. And I'm brushing my hairs upwards, and I kinda went a little bit, just tiny, bit bolder on the brows, because this look isn't gonna have a lot of eyeshadows going on. So I wanted to keep the brows kind of like a bold, more natural, grown out kind of feel. This brow has been giving me such problems lately. I'm so mad at it right now. And by the way, to fill in my brows, I did use my Anastasia Dip Brow in the shade Medium Brown. Next, I'm gonna be taking my Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer in the Light to Medium Matte shade, and I'm just gonna be warming up my skin a little bit more. So I'm just gonna be taking this onto the hollows of my cheek. And then just to add a little bit more of a glow, I'm gonna be taking a bronzing powder from Mary Kay. It's more of like a shimmery type of bronzer, not really matte, just so we can add a little bit of a nice golden touch. And I'm actually just gonna be taking that directly over on top of my cheeks. And around my forehead too. Then to further define the contour, I'm gonna be taking my Anastasia Contour Kit and I'm actually gonna be using the shade Fawn, if I can get this open. I'm going to be taking the shade right here. It's more of that grayish toned shade. This one is called Fawn. And I'm taking this on a Sephora number 56 brush. This is technically a foundation brush, but I've just really been loving it for contouring because it just fits right into the hollow of my cheek really well. Now you can see how this one is a lot more defined as opposed to this side. And then I'm taking this shade right here. I still don't know the names of these as far as which one's in the correct order. I'm actually just gonna be taking this on the sides of my forehead more, so around the temple area. Now, taking that same shade, I'm just gonna shade in a little bit here on my cupid's bow and also on my bottom lip. And then going back to Fawn, I'm gonna now contour my nose. And then last but not least, taking the banana powder here, and I'm gonna use it just to set underneath my eyes really quick. I actually find that now that I'm a little bit more tan than what I was before, this banana shade works even better for me. Sometimes, especially at that point where I think I was the palest, this turned up a little bit too, too yellow on my skin. But now I feel like it's actually just the right amount of highlight for me. I'm actually taking that a little bit on my chin too. For the blush, we're going to be using the Bobbi Brown Brightening Brick. This was a limited edition item. I don't believe you can find it anywhere anymore. Um, and you can use just any, there's so many brands that make these little um, sets of a bronzer and blush kind of mixed together. This one's just like a really nice bronzy, but yet it has a little bit of a pink tone to it. And then it has that nice highlight shade. What I like to do is actually just use all three of them together at once because it has that little bit of a nice rosy bronze look as opposed to it being just straight up brown or bronze. And as if that wasn't enough bronziness going on in our lives, I'm gonna even take it a step further. I mean, we're going all out for this look. I'm gonna be putting on my highlight already. And again, this is gonna be another limited edition item. Sorry, but it was just so perfect for this look. I could not help but use it. So it's going to be the Bobbi Brown Highlighting Powder. These were limited edition during their past holiday collection. This one is Bronze Glow. They did come out with a pink one as well, but since I finally have a little bit of color in me, 
I know I've been saying that a lot throughout this whole video, but I can't help it. I really love it when I'm tan. I feel like this color is gonna look more suitable for the skin tone that I'm at right now as opposed to what I was at when I was really, really fair because sometimes it would come out a little bit chunky and you could really see where the gold mark was because I was so fair. But if you have a little bit of color in you, it blends out and blends into your skin tone a lot better. So I'm gonna be taking this on a Real Techniques, what is this brush called? It's actually called a setting brush, but I love this brush for highlight. And take some on the top of my cheekbones here. I love that glow, look at it. And then just to make sure everything is really nice and well blended, I'm gonna be taking my Bobbi Brown Face Blender brush to just kind of go over everything and make sure it's all really nice and worked into each other. Now moving on to the eyes. Oh, I don't know what happened, but my eye got super watery, so I tried to ignore that mess. Oh my gosh. So first off, I'm gonna be taking my MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre as my eye base. Then I'm gonna be taking my Mary Kay Emerald Noir Little Eyeshadow Quad. Not really a quad, because it has more than four colors, but I really don't know what else to call it, so we're gonna go with quad. And I'm gonna be taking this nice taupey color right here. And that color is just gonna go right into my crease. Then using that same quad, I'm gonna be using this nice chocolatey brown color there. And I'm gonna be placing that color on the outer V and inner C. Just putting it right here on the outer V, going over into the crease, and then we're gonna be building it up right here on the inner C as well. And then on the center part of our lid and on the inner corner, I'm going to be taking the pretty gold shade that's right in the center. And then for this look, I didn't really want a shimmery brow bone highlight, so I'm going to be taking my Naked Basics palette and I'm actually going to be taking the color Walk of Shame, which is this nice matte cream shade right here, and I'm going to be putting that as my brow bone highlight. And then for the bottom lash line, I'm going to be using that same Urban Decay palette and I'm actually going to be taking the color Faint, which is this dark brown shade here. And I'm going to be taking that onto a MAC 212 brush. So I'm going to just be tight lighting those bottom lashes with that shadow. And then to blend out that bottom lash line, I'm going to be taking that taupey color and the dark chocolate color from that Mary Kay Quad to just buff it all out. Then I'm going to be lining my waterline using the NYX Wonder Pencil. I believe this is in the shade Medium. And that just really cleans up and brightens up that waterline so our eyes can appear a little bit larger. After giving my lashes a quick curl, I'm going to be going over them with a light coat of mascara. I'm using my Mary Kay Ultimate Mascara. So I'm lightly going to be coating my upper lashes, but for my bottom lashes, I'm going to go pretty heavy handed, only because the star of the show is going to be these really natural looking but very long lashes. For the false lashes we're going to be using, I am using my Red Cherries number 523. Here's the pack. Once the glue has become pretty tacky, I'm going to just pop these right on. So once these suckers are on, it obviously looks really nice, really pretty, they're a good length already, but like I said, I wanted to give it a more natural, kind of almost unrealistically long feel, but yet to where it wasn't so obvious that they were perfect like false lashes in a band would be. So that's where we're going to add in some individuals and make it a little bit more fluffy and a little bit more wispy. I'm taking my Ardell Lashes uh, Dura Lash. These are in the singles pack, so you have short, mediums, and longs. I'm gonna be taking about four of the long ones and about two of the mediums. I'm adding the four ones just sporadically on the end of my lash band, and then I'm gonna be taking those two mediums and just kind of popping them more on the inner corner to just even out the flow. Okay, so now all the other little individual lashes are put on, and as you can tell, it really just adds a little bit of extra something to the look. So now moving on to finish off this look, we're going to move on to the lips. So for the lips, I'm actually going to be taking the Anastasia Liquid Lipstick in the shade Pure Hollywood. It's that very nice nude shade. And when I say nude, I mean nude. I'm actually going to lightly moisturize my lips before because they're looking kind of dry. And this is a very matte lipstick, and just to prevent any further irritation, I'm just going to moisturize them a tiny bit. So I actually went over my lips with some lip balm, and then I actually put some foundation left over from my brush over them on top, just to totally like mute out the color of my lips. I am now realizing... <laughs> 
that at the beginning of this uh, at the beginning of this lip part of the tutorial I think I called this color pure Hollywood I got it confused with the other one that I have this one's milkshake And then just to add a little bit of definition back into our lips, since this is a very muted out color, I'm using my NYX lip liner in the shade, I always forget the shade of this, Pink Nude. And just to make the blend of this more realistic, I'm not just lining my lips on the outer part, I'm actually shading in just a tiny bit on those inner corners too. Now you could call the look pretty much completed at about this point if you wanted to just leave it at this pretty bronze look with just a really nice nude lip to keep it really interesting and it really makes the rest of your skin look even more bronze. But I'm going to take it just a little step further for those who maybe want to do something a little bit more fun and creative and out of the box since after all it is a music festival a lot of people like to do a lot of creative things and get a little bit more artsy fartsy. So I'm going to be taking that same Bobbi Brown highlighter that I used as a highlight for the inner corner. Wait, I didn't use that as the inner corner. That was totally wrong. As a highlight for my cheekbones and the rest of my face. And just on a regular eyeshadow brush, I'm going to be taking up a little bit of that product. And we're going to do that nice, cool, iridescent look on the lips, like in the Instagram posting. So really, you're just going to dab it on the center here. You can build it up as bright as you want it to be, or you can actually just tone it down. It's really up to you. You can put it pretty much all over the inner part of your lips, just on the center. It's just going to be whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm actually going to put it pretty much about halfway out this way, halfway out this way. And then you're pretty much done. So not only is this look really cool for music festivals or Coachella, whatever other festival you're going to be going to, it's also a really cool editorial look because of the lips. So even if you're not doing this because you're going to a music festival, maybe you just want to play around with some colors, go for it. It's the best way to find out what looks can be different and interesting and like I said, editorial. Anyway, this completes this look and tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a nice big thumbs up. Um, tell me what you liked most about it and if you would try this really cool gold foil looking lips. Tell me. I want to know. Would you do it? And uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and share and then I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!